Hi you guys, today we're going to be talking about a heavy subject. Um, I'm going to be talking with you about domestic violence, intimate partner violence, and this is actually something that's a pretty big deal and pretty common, so I thought we would talk about it. Every minute, 20 people experience intimate partner violence. That's crazy. That's a lot, right? So let's talk about it. So I was going to a counselor and I was telling her about um, some stories from a relationship that I had and she said, Stephanie, you were in a domestic violence relationship. And I was like, no, it was unhealthy, but it wasn't domestic violence. And she said, yeah, um, domestic violence is on a continuum and that is definitely domestic violence. And I remember thinking to myself at the time that I would never be in a domestic violence relationship. My sister was in one at the time, like one of the extreme types of domestic violence. And I was like, I will never do that. But at the time I only had so much understanding of what that was. And then I also was thinking about, I was limiting what that included, which also meant that when I limit what it includes, I'm also dismissing everyone else who's in this similar situation who is experiencing something similar to what I was experiencing. And so on this continuum of domestic violence, there's the extreme, and then there's everywhere in between. And then people will say, so when we think about this continuum of domestic violence, it's important to acknowledge when you've been there so that you can heal from it and move through it. Pretending it didn't exist or minimizing it in ourselves or dismissing it makes it so that we're not really trusting our feelings and what happened to us and therefore we can't work through it. Um, and when I think back to this situation and the things that I experienced and then even after the breakup and this guy stalked me, he was like, not Facebook stalked me, but like legitimately stalked me. And that was kind of scary. Um, to know that someone was watching me when I didn't know they were watching me and then would try to use that information to hurt me or um, yeah so when I think back to it it's kind of eye-opening and even though and even though a piece of me still feels awkward saying that it was a domestic violence relationship if somebody else was telling me that story I would see it and I would say wow that was not okay what they were doing to you, and that is abusive. But when it happens to ourselves, sometimes we wanna minimize it so that it doesn't seem as extreme or dramatic. And, but it is what it is, and I grew through it. And because of my imperfect teeth, I almost sentenced myself to a lifetime of being in that type of relationship. Crazy, right? And people wonder, why not leave a domestic violence relationship if that's what you're in? If you're not getting treated well, just leave. Well, let's think about this. How easy is it to stay in a comfort zone? Even when we know it's not good for us, right? Like, let's take drinking soda, for instance. We all know soda isn't good for us, so why don't we just stop drinking it? We know that sugar is a toxin and it's addicting, yet we keep drinking it. So, you know, if it's that hard to leave pop, how could we think that it would be so easy to leave a relationship that we invested in and a person that we do care about? Because these people that are abusive are not always abusive. There are moments of beauty in that relationship and people want to hang on to that beauty. So think about that next time you want to say how easy it is to just leave a situation. Can you put down that soda? Could you never drink soda again? You know it's hurting you. Something to think about, right? So when you just get into a relationship, this person is very nice at first. They're very charming. And they subtly start doing things that lower your self-esteem. And... Um, they subtly start doing things that you may not even notice or you think like, huh, that was weird. But it's not like they're full on what they are towards the end of the relationship or the middle. If they started a relationship that way, no one would stay, right? 
So um, it's once we care about that person, we fall in love with them, we know that there's good sides. And what does imperfect teeth have to do with anything? Well, my friends, when I was in middle school, my teeth um, got knocked back in gym class by somebody's elbow, and so it kind of killed my two front teeth, and then they were gray for all through middle school and high school. I know, right? And I had some crooked bottom teeth. And so, anyway, in middle school, I really liked this boy, and he liked me back, but he told my friend he would never date me because of my teeth. And so, because my gray teeth, and I was like, oh, wow, oh, okay. So I guess I'm not dateable because I have two gray teeth um, that I had nothing to do with. And um, so then when I met this other guy who, a couple of years later, who did want to date me in high school, I thought, wow, this is my chance. This is my chance for love. And so whenever he treated me the way that he did, um, I just thought, this is what I'm going to have to settle with. This is who I'm going to be with. And I hated this person, and I loved this person at the same time. And um, I thought this person loved me. And as I grew, I realized it's not really how you treat people you love. And the other thing when we think about people who are in these type of relationships, people say, again, with the whole, like, just leave, blah, 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 right? Well, first of all, leaving is the most dangerous part. Like I said, even myself, mine wasn't even the extreme case. And when we broke up and this person broke up with me, he still stalked me. So today I wanted to share with you um, a poem that one of my friends wrote and this friend was experiencing intimate partner violence and my friend um, left this relationship and was kind of in a honeymoon phase at first feeling on top of the world, cloud nine, unstoppable, ready to take on the world and then hit an extreme low. And my friend was able to pull themselves back out of this and is now feeling really good about life and really glad about the decision they made. Um, and my friend wrote a poem and I asked if I could share this poem in case it resonates with anybody else and maybe inspires them to know that they're not alone and that other people have been where they are and have moved through that situation. So let's get to my friend's poem, shall we? It hit me again, the nightmare in my mind. Love is supposed to be patient. It's supposed to be kind. When I think of what our love was, it definitely was not that way. There are many things that happened that I wish I didn't have to say. Love is supposed to protect. Love is supposed to trust. It's supposed to not envy. It's supposed to not lust. Love is supposed to be gentle and always persevere. Love shouldn't make it hard to look in the mirror. Love is supposed to not be easy to anger. Love is supposed to be strong like a ship's strongest anchor. Love is supposed to be about honor and respect. Love should not be shown with hands squeezing my neck. You knew of the things that happened in my past. You knew that those memories, they last and they last. I try to forget, but they're always around. Some days it feels like they're trying to make me drown. You knew the pain I have buried deep inside, but still you got enjoyment out of making me cry. You hurt me again and again and again, but this time we would never be able to mend. I remember this dream like it was yesterday, because you see, it's actually a bad memory. A memory I wish so badly I could forget but I'm stuck to it like a fish in a net. I remember us as we began to fight in what would turn out to be our very worst night. You threw my phone down, step one of one round. I don't remember how the fact ended with such a hard smack. I put my hand to my face 
as I felt the blood in my heart begin to race. You hit me once more before you threw me down to the floor. That's when I knew I had to be good. That's when I closed my mouth like I knew I should. I got myself up and I walked to the table. Oh, how I wish this was only a fable. I shut myself down and I looked away. I hoped you had nothing more to do or to say. But you had so much anger deep in your heart. You just watched to watch me fall as I fell all the way apart. The next thing I knew, I was laying on the ground, making a horrible, horrible moaning sound. I had no control over the noise I was making. I had no control of the uncontrollable shaking. You kept on screaming like you couldn't see that I was hurting so badly in all actuality. It was in that moment that I finally saw that what we had was in fact not love at all. It was in that moment that I finally knew that love does not turn someone all black and all blue. It was in that moment that I finally decided our love was not as one, it was definitely divided. You finally gave up and went off to bed. So many thoughts were just running through my head. I finally managed to get myself up. I knew you'd be sleeping, so I didn't want to disrupt. I made my way into the bathroom to see what I looked like after what you had done to me. Blood covered my face. It's a sight I wish I could erase. I took off my shirt to inspect the damage. At that moment, I prayed that I would just simply vanish. I saw my body covered in bruises. I knew what you'd done was classic abusive. And just like that, after every episode of prior abuse, I knew you'd follow with a classic excuse. You'd always blame the beer, but to this day, it's still so unclear. You left me with wounds on the inside and out. You left me forever to constantly doubt. You broke me with words. You broke me with your hand. To this day, I will never be able to understand. All I can do is deeply bury the hurt. That's something I can call myself an expert. These memories will last for a while. Some days it's hard to fake my smile. But every day I try my very best. Every day it feels like I'm going to fail the test. One day I will find real love. One day it won't always end with a shove. One day I will be okay. But unfortunately that time is just not today.